I flew halfway around the world to get away from the man, and here he is, he shows up. Now what the heck is going on? I'm Corbin Tyson. This is my wife, Sarah. We've got three kids. This is Max, Owen, and Audrey, who thinks she's Princess Elsa. I'm on a journey to find out what it means to be a good dad. We all have a story. We all come from somewhere. We all have circumstances that shape us. What's your story? Chris Reese is my son's football coach, and I've never met a guy more passionate about fourth grade boys flag football. He comes from a family of deep heritage, honor, and faith that shapes them as a family. Growing up, Chris's dad wasn't around much, but he was there for him as much as he could. As a boy, you always want that approval of your father. I mean, to this day, I can still remember freshman football, game done, got done, walked up to my dad, gives me a butterfinger, dropped a couple passes. <laughs> so you remember those things. Yeah, I just really want, want to hear my dad say he's proud, that, he's, that you know, he recognizes what I've done uh, with, you know, being a father of four, you know, married now for 16 years, my wife Kristen. Uh, been to cop, you know, got, get gone through college and law school and seminary and uh, pursued pursued you know things and and, and and been successful and that he's proud of that. Because I catch you know I catch it with my own my own kids. Probably the two older kids I'm the hardest on, and I catch myself not communicating that. And you know, even with my own kids, the way I communicate sometimes isn't necessarily the language my kids are speaking or how they receive love. People will always say, well, you're trying to live vicariously through your kids. Maybe for me, the only way I'm living vicariously is the fact that I'm there. I didn't have that. I enjoy being involved. Maybe that's why I coach. Maybe that's why I help out you know, when I do, because I just, I didn't have that. You know, and it's not a knock on my dad. It's just, it's fact of the matter and it's what life, and it, that made me for part of who I am today. So I have to relish it because it is part of who I am. It's showing me how, how important it is to spend that time with your kids. I mean, we've got our cell phones, we have our iPads. I'm home, but then I've got my face in my iPad or you know, on my phone or on the you know, laptop or the TV's on. Am I really present? And I think I, if I think about it, you know, that's, I'm not there yet. My dad was in Vietnam, and while over there, my grandfather somehow had pulled some strings and ended up showing up in Vietnam. <laughs> April of 1966, a buddy of mine, Gary Her Herbert, and I decided we'd join the Army. I ended up in Southeast Asia as a, a crew chief on a helicopter. So when he went to Nam, had a friend of mine in the in the Pentagon, and I called Monty, and I said, "Can you get me into Nam?" He said, "No problem." I had a call. Uh, it was my dad. He was in Saigon, and he said he'll be up to visit us. I looked at the phone, and my first reaction was, "I flew halfway around the world to get away from the man, and here he is. He shows up. Now, what the heck is going on?" We met the commandant, and he said, uh, "Hey, do you want to do you want to fly with us? Uh, you want to fly in the morning?" We've been shot at. We've been shot down. And my dad comes over to Vietnam and visits me, uh, and spends three weeks with us. You know, he flew on some missions. Really, it was a surreal experience. I remember when I left, I can still see Gary walking off away. I think I've got a picture of that because I had a camera. It was, it was, I was really proud to have Gary there. You know, I didn't see any other fathers visit uh, while we were over there in combat. I wanted him to know that I loved him. When we used to go out to restaurants, everybody knew my family. Everybody knew my grandfather, everybody knew my uncle, everybody knew my dad. So I kind of grew up with that idea that there was a sense of pride, there was a sense of honor about, uh, you know, about our family. We may have our issues, which, you know, every family does but you're there for each other. I, mean, if I, I know if I need something, I, no matter what that might be, family member can, will, will step up at, at one point you know, and, and help. When I sat down with Chris's dad and grandpa, 
I got the sense that they did the best they could with what they had. Even though they had their differences and even though they had a tough time expressing it, they love each other. They have each other's back. And Chris's heritage is deep and has changed the way he has approached raising his kids. It's not about being perfect. It's not about getting it right every time, but it's about being there and a good dad to me is present. When I was going through some conflict with my dad recently, my friend Kevin told me that I needed to lower my expectations of who I thought my dad should be. When I sat down with my dad and talked about how he was raised, it changed everything. I learned that he did the best that he could with what he had. You know, I often find that it is really hard to express how I feel and to be fully present. How can we as dads do a better job expressing ourselves and being more present?